Welcome to Creekside Chats with successful multifamily real estate investors. Dr. Allen chats with successful investors exploring their journey from setback to triumph. Through this window, we glimpse the truths that inspire our guests to invest abundantly and flourish in all areas of life. And now your host, Dr. Allen. Welcome to Creekside Chats with successful multifamily real estate investors. I'm your host, Dr. Allen. Today's guest is an international real estate investor investing in the United States, Australia, and Indonesia. He authored the book, Real Estate is a Team Sport, and co-authored 10,000 Miles to the American Dream, a roadmap to success in the U.S. real estate market. He is the host of the Real Estate Locker Room podcast show. While living in Melbourne, he founded American Property Source to enable Aussies to safely invest in U.S. real estate. Welcome to the show, John Carney. All right. All right. Thanks for having me, uh, Dr. Allen. Well, thanks for being here, John. I was... Uh, expecting to be talking to an Aussie today, but you certainly don't sound like one. Where Where did you grow up? You know, I am. Uh, I'm back in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh-huh. I um, I moved back here with my Australian uh, wife and my two oh, little okay. Australian children, and four years ago, as of like uh-huh. a couple of days ago. And uh, but I was born and raised on the west side of Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, okay. um, I left in '97. Uh, after I graduated from Miami of Ohio, I went out to Colorado, where, where one year in the mountains did, mm-hmm. turned into 12. Um, I, I got around and, and traveled a lot. Uh, I did some and, and met an Australian. Uh, and we, we fell in love when I was uh, doing some work, real estate related work in Bali, Indonesia. And, you know, just to give people mm-hmm. over here on this continent, you know, a point of reference, uh, Indonesia, Australia is in a different neighborhood. And, and so, you know, Bali really uh, speaks to Southeast Asia and Australia, specifically in New Zealand as a, as a tourist destination, sort of like Florida okay. would be if you're in the Midwest or, uh-huh. you know, Mexico would be if you're in the, in the Southwest. So, um, you know, a- after a number of years, my wife's uh, mom was, was ill and I moved over there to support her and her family in 2009. And, and we were there for seven years, got married oh, okay. and had a couple of kids. Ah, okay. See, well, interesting there. Uh, I, you, uh, I just got your books uh, yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to delve into them too deeply, but I did get a chance to survey them. And uh, uh looks like some excellent, excellent material there. So before we go into getting to know you, just uh, tell our listeners just a little bit about uh, about your books there. Well, sure. You know, when I was uh, when I was living in Australia, uh, the, the I was a founder of a business in Melbourne with some Australian partners, and and we called it America Property Source, and and it was a time of, uh, you know, the 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 financial downturn here in the United States. It was two thousand and ten. Um, I had a real estate, uh, you know, I was beginning my real estate investing career in America when that happened in my development career, and and that abruptly ended. And we hit the pause button and, and I wanted to be able to, Australians have a thirst for property as they call it, real estate investing. And they were looking to the United States as their dollar, dollar was getting stronger. And I just had a unique network and skill set to be able to put the pieces together. But take the property out of the equation, right? The deals, a, a wholesale deal or a single family home deal is only as good as the people you have around you. Right. Mm-hmm. That included, you know, my business and my service. And we really went, you know, we were taking money from people, cash, putting it into a foreign country. And we took that very seriously. And we wanted to, you know, um, be a part of people's wealth creation process and, and avoid costly mistakes, which, by the way, I had made, you know, previously in, in foreign countries and, you know, learn, learn the lesson the hard way. So really just focused on a great system and, and being surrounded by great people who had the right professional advice. So um, I found that uh, a few people weren't following that advice and, and that led to the book. I wanted, I wanted people to be successful. I wanted our clients to be successful and, and wanted to give them a roadmap. So, you know, I wrote the book and, and real estate is a team sport. Australians are, are big into their sports. It was, it was speaking to the audience. And, but it is. And so, um, you know, that just kind of became something that I gave to people who contacted me about wanting to invest in in the United States. It was never as simple as, hey, I want to go buy a house in America right now. You know, there were a number of steps we had to take, um, you know, to qualify 
um, an, an investor, a potential investor, a potential client ahead of time. And, and so that was, that was a suggested reading. And, um, you know, that, that's the story behind that book. Well, uh, it, yeah, it, it looks like a, a very good uh, a guide and manual for, for anybody, but certainly I can understand how it could be uh, essential for uh, investors who are out of the country. Um, well, let's go into uh, you and find out uh, who the real uh, John Carney is. So let's go back to uh, your childhood. And if you can think for a moment, uh, think about a time in your life as you look back on it, you look back on this event or experience as it being a formative experience that has helped to shape who uh, John Carney is today. Well, you know, the, there is definitely some, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, childhood. I, I was really fortunate. You know, I, I had, um, you know, two parents and a brother. We had a, we had a loving nuclear family and, and um, I had two, two sets of grandparents that lived, you know, basically across the street, hmm. you know, for my first four years and, and a number of cousins and aunts and uncles. So, I mean, we had a big family, big family gatherings. It was always somebody's birthday. It was always a, a reason to get together. And, um, you know, I really looked up to, to my older cousin, Peter, who's, who's just like a brother. And, you know, I, I maybe, maybe part of that was, um, was I, I had an older role model that I, I was chasing around now, whether it was skateboards or BMX bikes or playing ice hockey or, or, you know, the love I developed for, for, for downhill skiing, right. Alpine skiing that all, that all, you know, was sort of modeled after what my cousin was doing. And, you know, being the little guy, I, I, I caught my fair share, <laughs> the little cousin, I caught my, my fair share of, um, you know, friendly, friendly abuse. I don't know how you want to put it, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if, they, if you can yeah. say that these days, but you know, it was, um, I, it, I, I think that there is a bit of resilience and grit that might've been born out of that experience and, mm -hmm. you know, being served up cups of toilet water and locked in closets and all those type of things. <laughs> how much older was your cousin? You know, uh, my, my cousin Peter is two years older. Oh, okay. And um, in in uh, my cousin Andre is two years younger, and then my my brother is you know four years younger. So you kind of had these four boys uh, with the bookends being my mm -hmm. brother and my cousin Pete. And um, mm -hmm. you know we we were really close growing up, and we still are. Well, that's 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 wonderful. Can you think of uh, one particular uh, experience uh, with uh, with your older cousin that is particularly meaningful? I, I think it all kind of wraps wrap might wrap into one, you know, it, it was really, um, it was trying, it was trying to keep up. It, it really was trying to keep up. Now we've got, you know, a, a bunch of little kids in our neighborhoods and you see how quickly the younger ones who want to keep up with the older kids accelerate, whether it's, you know, taking the training wheels off your, your, your pedal bike, or whether it's, you know, pushing a scooter, they, they just, if, if you're, if you're trying to keep up with the older kids, and they're they're a good role model. That, that might be what it what it's all about. Well, once again, thinking uh, back on your life, um, Robert Fro Frost uh, penned the words uh, some time ago: two roads diverged in the wood, and I and I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference." Uh, think back upon your life and. Uh, uh, a why in the road where you took the road less traveled that has made all the difference uh, for you. I, I love that, that saying, by the way, um, Dr. Allen, but let, let me also just mention a big part of my childhood. Okay. And I'll try to keep it short was that um, I had my two grandmothers in, in um, the narrative that, that also led to the, quintessential American dream, if you want to call it that, that if you put your mind to something, you can do it, right? So it wasn't necessarily all about chasing my cousin around. It was also about uh, my mom's mother, who uh, she was an immigrant from Bulgaria. Um, my mom's father was, you know, a World War One veteran. 
in old school. He, he was a doctor, but he came to the United States to put himself through medical school and, uh, you know, had, had a stowaway basically on a ship, arrived with nothing, you know, worked in a factory, then went back to Europe and practiced, met my grandmother. And, and they had um, a 20 year difference in age. And so she was a very young, um, you know, new mother when she came over to America with my mom's older brother. And, um, you know, she learned English. She became a real estate investor. She became a stock market guru. You know, every, every day the newspapers were spread out on the kitchen table and she was going through it with her different colored pens, right? And that, that was part of, you know, math, hard work, you know, doing, focusing and in, in being, was, was, was part of the narrative that was ingrained in me. And on the other side, my father's, um, my father's grandparents on his father's side, right, um, came over from Ireland, uh, poor, um, you know, wanted the best life for their two boys, my grandfather and his brother, you know, they, they were skipping school to work to afford money to pay for their school books. And, you know, they were able to, through grit and resilience, um, you know, start, a, start an excavating business, go to law school, uh, become successful real estate developers. Uh, my grandfather was a judge. And, and, you know, so that was just the narrative. That, that's what I was surrounded by. And, um, you know, as you get older and you look back on, on conversations like what we're having, you really do realize how, how impactful those, being surrounded by those people are. So I am grateful for that. And, and the lesson of if you want to set your mind to something and, and work hard, you'll get there. Don't quit and be gritty. That, that's where it all came from. So um, to get to the path in the that's, road. Uh, that's quite a legacy there. Let me interrupt you here for just one moment. Uh, my guest today is John Carney, and he is the author of the book, Real Estate is a Team Sport, which uh, teaches investors how to position themselves to profit in any real estate market. And we are just now getting uh, to know uh, John. And so, uh, sorry for the interruption, John, uh, but tell us, yeah, what, tell us about this uh, why in the road that has made all the difference. Yeah, I, 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 self-examination, right? Sitting on the rock. How did, how do you end up where you are? And, and what I think that it really boils down to a curiosity and, and a resistance to, to being told no. Not, not necessarily. I'm not going to use the word defiant. I'm going to use the word resistance because sometimes there's a good reason, a compelling reason. Um, you know, more so when you're younger. But as you grow up and, and you want to try and figure out how to do things or possibly be innovative and try and figure out how to do something better that might, that, that might be using new technology, or the, there's all kinds of examples. And you, and you come up with a firm, no, I, I'm not going to accept that on face value. And, um, and, and it's not to be defined. It's, it's more of a curiosity. Is there, is there a reason for this? Is there... It, you know, why, you know, so that that's more of a, a curiosity driven why, um, you know, questioning and, and with the opportunity to, um, to take the, the road less traveled. I had a, uh, a trip to, to my first trip to Indonesia and Australia and, um, and, you know, was booked with, with, a, with, a you know, a girlfriend I was dating. We broke up. I, I was, you know, in my early twenties, I had the plane ticket you know, I'd saved up for it and I went anyways. So that was the, the road less traveled. And I was nervous. I'd never traveled outside of, um, you know, my home country by myself. I'd been to other places with friends and groups, but never by myself. So that was, you know, maybe that's my version of the road less traveled. And it opened up so many doors. This could have been, you know, almost 20 years ago. I think it was in 2001. So 19 years ago. You know, and, and that, that um, wh whether you, you want to call it a risk or just going, you know, the curiosity took me anyways. And um, when, you're, when you're traveling solo and you're, you're off far away from home, that there were no, no one had a cell phone back then. I don't even know if I, I may have had my first Yahoo account, that email account back then. You know, technology was different. So it was about, um, you know, meeting people. Um, figuring, you know, being exposed to people from different countries and different cultures in different countries and different cultures and, and um, you know, figuring things out for yourself. And, and, and I learned that I liked that. And, and that, that was kind of the gateway to other entrepreneurial endeavors. 
So tell us about a concrete example. You said that many doors opened um, as you uh, ventured out on that, uh, on that journey. So uh, give us some concrete examples of some of the doors that opened. You know, I, because uh, of that. Sure. I'd gone to Indonesia to pursue, you know, a dive master certificate just based. That's a long ways to go for a dive master certificate. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it was in between seasons and I had learned traveling the year before in Southeast Asia that that was um, even less expensive on the U S dollar at the time than Thailand. And when Mm -hmm. I asked the people over there where they went, you know, on their downtime or during the rainy season, they had mentioned these islands off the coast of Bali called the Gili Islands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you look at the cost of it, maybe it was a few hundred dollars for, for, you know, a month of diving and instruction and a PADI certificate. And um, some of the people I met, you know, were were folks that had, had, um, just like me, my age group had chosen to leave home and, and live and work in another country. Um, people were exporting goods from Indonesia back back to the United States, and and that led you know that sparked the idea of my my first business, which was bringing furniture and timber over from Indonesia to the United States. Okay, I wasn't really good at that, but you know that was the first that was the first crack at it, and um, you know that led into into real estate investing opportunities in, in the Western states, you know, where, where, where it was into markets that was more affordable than where I lived in Colorado, as well as, um, you know, some, some real estate investment opportunities in Indonesia. So, you know, all of a sudden, you know, one trip on your own and conversations you had with people and, and relationships you built at that time did, did lead to, you know, there, there could be something more out there. And that really, um, mm-hmm you know, combined coupled maybe with the curiosity that, that just led to, to, you know, where, where I am today. Well, there's a core strength about you that I probably lack myself because I could have gone on that same trip and gone through that course and been there for a month and never made any connections. So what is it about you? What's that core strength that helps you to go into uh, a totally strange and different situation and come out of it making um, phenomenal connections like that? I don't know. Maybe it's, 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 it's really interesting. I, I think that there's just a, um, you know, young people in their, in their 20s who, who, who push their comfort zone. Uh, maybe it could have been where it was. You know, at that time in my life, I was living in, in Colorado I was working in the ski industry. It was seasonal, and, and 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 you were amongst another group of people after after college. You were amongst another new group of people who were out in in an area for for a common reason, mm-hmm. and um, everything we were doing back home in Colorado was was challenging both both physically and mentally. You know whether it was uh, backcountry skiing or or developing. You know how how to uh, navigate the whitewater you know, it was just being surrounded by people. And I, I just showed up there as a, as another, another guy for a summer from the Midwest. Yeah. With very yeah. limited skills. And, um, you know, that, that, that was what I was drawn to. So you can call it a type A personality, but it, it was uh, really just about, you know, the, the, the physical and mental challenge. And, and I find business to be very similar and except, you know, your, the goal of every entrepreneur is is to um, you know help other people out along the way, and, and um, you know that can be done. So I, I don't know if I answered your question or if I went down a rabbit hole, but um, I don't have an answer. I, I was just I, I'm a people person. I like people, and um, you know I'm I, I'm curious about other places around the world and, and where you come from and what it's like, right. and. Um, I wish I had the, 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 the time and the means to go visit every, every place on planet Earth. But that's, there's that spirit of adventure and travel. And so, um, you know, that again, that came from my, my, grand, my, my grandma on my mother's side. Well, you certainly had a, a, a wonderful legacy of uh, entrepreneurs and uh, uh, inspirational thinkers and doers uh, on both sides of, uh, of your family there. Uh, 
And I'm sure that uh, that legacy has helped a great deal. But I, yeah, I, I do think there's something within uh, your personality, clearly uh, an extroverted uh, personality. Uh, you probably never had any difficulty engaging uh, in any conversation anywhere is my guess. Is that right? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, it's not. I think everything is, is learned in, uh, in, in either, in either I, traveling on your own by the first, I, I, I've done it a lot, but I mean, the first time was daunting. Yeah. Um, landing in a, in a foreign country by yourself and, and having to engage with people, having to go out and, 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 and meet people and, and yeah. do everything. So, I mean, um, it, it was sort of forced in, in public speaking, you know, I, I, <laughs> it, could, it was terrifying, you know, getting up in front of a group of people, wow. no matter how, how, how large, but these were things that I learned through, you know, being, you, you have to get up and give a presentation in college. I mean, I hated that, you know, and really? now I give presentations to groups, but I mean, it, it's, it I really never would is, have guessed that. Yeah. Yeah. It really is forcing yourself mm -hmm. into, into uncomfortable situations. I mean, that, that is, I, I don't think that that's groundbreaking news. You know, I think that, that you, you look at, you know, people over time, it, it's, it's when you're, when you, when you really, you know, suck it up and go out there. And then of course, you know, when you do give you that first presentation to a group of people and, and everything goes well, you're like, God, oh, it wasn't horrible. And you, you just got to build it up, I suppose. I don't think anyone goes from, you know, out, out into a, a stadium full of folks, right? And, and, and I certainly never done that, right? So you start <laughs> you start with a small group of people yeah. in a room, yeah. and and, and, and you and you up. go where you go. But yeah. it's part of the journey, I suppose. Right, growth process is there. Well, we are, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of our time here. Uh, but before uh, we conclude here, I just want you to uh, to contemplate here for just a, a moment here. It's always nice to talk about uh, our successes, but every successful person has had to deal with setbacks and disappointments. So if you could share with us a particular uh, disappointment, setback in your life, um, and how did you deal with it? Uh, how did you come through it? Well, you know, it's it's sort of um, the, it's, it's a great question. I think um, when, when, I, when I went into the export business, I really didn't know what I was doing. I managed to, to bring a few containers over, sell the product, go back and get more. But that cycle, you know, finally, you know, it, it ended. And, and I wasn't good at what I was doing and, and I wanted to be, and, but I, you know, it, it was an, an epic failure and, and there was no one else to really point, point the finger at other than myself. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't surround myself with experts and, um, you know, I, I didn't do all the, all the things that they would teach you in a entrepreneur accelerator or, or business school. So, you know, but um, that, that didn't happen all at once. It, it played itself out over a number of years with, with small wins, incremental wins there. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, the, the, um, the losses outweighed the wins and that, that's just how it was. So um, it happened the first couple, you know, I had a few successful real estate deals and then I had a few unsuccessful real estate deals. So you don't want to keep spinning your wheels, breaking even. You want to figure out how you, how you keep, you know, building upon those little wins. And that, that's what they are on in the base hits, right. For a sports analogy. And then um, prepare yourself for, I'm mean, sorry for going down the sports track. You got to prepare yourself for the, for, for the perfect pitch. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's only going to come by getting out there and, and getting amongst it and surrounding yourself with people. So um, while I probably knew that and was taught that, you know, I'm, I'm focused more now than ever, the older I get and surrounding myself with people that I want to be around um, that are, you know, where I'm interested in their success. And, and you see that there's a reciprocal, you know, union there. Like I want, I want my, my friends and family and coworkers and, and business partners to be successful. And, and, you know, that's, that's sort of the, um, the bond you have being out there doing, doing hard things together and, and, and getting the results. And, and I, I don't mean it to be, 
Um, you, you know, anything other than the way I see it is it, it, it has to be done the hard way. It, it does get a little bit easier, but I mean, it's, it's always a bit of a challenge. Well, my guest today is uh, John Carey, uh, author of the book, Real Estate is a Team uh, Sport. Uh, <clears throat> before we conclude here, if you could, uh, John, I've got one more question. And before we go into that last question, uh, tell our viewers and listeners how they can get in touch with you. Sure. You know, our business here in, in Cleveland, we have a, we have a multifamily uh, company. It's, we're into the next generation, but my father and his partner, Bob Rains are the founders of the landmark companies in downtown Cleveland. And, and we have one property, uh, the block apartments in Indianapolis and are, are, um, are well known for operating a great management company here in those cities. So you can uh, look up the land, landmarkmgt.com to learn a little bit more about um, those businesses or reach out to me at jc at landmarkmgt.com. And then uh, my podcast is on um, my website, uh, The Real Estate Locker Room Show is on johncarneyonline.com, you know, under the podcast uh, button. And we're available all over the internet, wherever podcasts can be found, we're there. But, you know, it's, it's similar. It's, it's about having conversations with other, other people in the real estate game and, um, you know, exploring. It's the curiosity. What are the common threads that, um, that, that lead to, to success and, and the, the clues? I like the quote, you know, success leaves clues. I don't know who said it, but I, I didn't, I didn't coin that phrase, but I like it because if you can surround yourself with people who are doing what you want to do and, and, and have demonstrated a track, a real track record of success and failures, you know, you, you're going to be um, better positioned to be successful yourself. And, and then, um, you know, you, you, there just comes a point where people look to you for, I suppose, for, for advice and, you know, if I can, if I can say something or do something or provide some content that helps somebody, you know, further their mission, raise the bar with whatever they're doing, that that's where the, you know, the, 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 you know, that, that, that feels good. That's how I'm, I'm doing my best to give back. Well, good deal, John. Um, and, uh, sounds like a good man to get in touch with. So, um, take note of that listeners and viewers here. So, John, my last question, which I ask all of my uh, guests on the show, is when you come to the end of this life's journey, how do you want your epitaph to read? Oh, man, I wish you would have prepped me for that. Um, <laughs> Caught you, you off guard there, huh? <laughs> I, I am doing my best to, you know, pass on, you know, I've got, I've got a, a six-year-old, a four-year-old and a wife, you know, my family means everything to me. And, um, you know, I want to, I, I want to raise great children and, and they will be enough of an epitaph for me. I don't need a, a monument. I just need, um, you know, whatever life lessons we can bestow on, on our children will, will definitely be enough for me. That's quite an, uh quite an epitaph uh, and uh, all of the all of us who've been parents know what a monumental task that is so I wish you the best uh, in that endeavor there John it's been a delight having you uh, a pleasure getting to know you and I hope that we can have uh, future conversations to get to know each other even uh, better so thanks for being on the show Hey, I really appreciate you, um, you know, sharing your show with me and, and um, we'll, we'll share it with, with um, my audience. And, and yeah, it was great to get to know you and, and keep up the good work. I love the format and the mission behind this and um, you're doing good things. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for tuning in to Creekside Chats with successful multifamily real estate investors brought to you by Steve Talker Capital. Steed Talker Capital works with both new and established investors nationwide, creating opportunities to flourish in all areas of life. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steed Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine. These endeavors attempt to enhance the human treatment of horses worldwide. Steed Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures great and small flourish abundantly. 
For resources to enhance your well-being through multifamily real estate investment, connect with us online at capital.steedtalker.com.